How to gain love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth. Personal perfection of your mind. Your personal guide to continuous improvement by Dominic Ficini, CI Books. Read by the author with commentary, David Yah. This book will show you exactly how to gain love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth. How to avoid becoming unloved, disrespected, sad, sick, and poor. How to use the unlimited power of your mind to get whatever you truly want. I don't believe what that's I don't believe that statement today. How to change any beliefs you have that are hurting you. How to set goals that get you excited. How to motivate yourself to take continuous actions towards your goals. What questions you need to ask yourself in order to come up with great ideas. How to make anything more valuable. How your mind works. How to have more control over your mind. What you need to do to continuously improve your mind. Why it's so important for you to continuously improve your mind. Where to find the absolute best products available on your mind today. And much, much more. Quantity sales. These are no longer available. The book is available for purchase on Amazon. I'll leave a link below. Although I don't recommend the book today. That's why I'm reading it with commentary. Many of my beliefs have changed since the writing of this book. How to gain love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth. Personal Perfection of Your Mind by Dominic Ficini. Dominic Ficini was my former name. My birth name was Peter Louis Dominic Ficini. When I wrote this book in 1994, I used my middle name Dominic and last name Ficini. Today I go by David Yah. This book is dedicated to my mother, Patricia, my father, Roger, my sister, Rachel, my brother, Roger, my son, Tyler, and my daughter, Dominique. That was before she was born, and her name was actually changed before she was born to Ashley, whom each I truly love and respect. I actually have eight children now. Acknowledgement. I want to thank the man who has helped me learn how to help myself, Anthony Robbins. At the time I wrote this book, most of the information I learned, a lot of it, well, not most of it, but a lot of my so-called wisdom, worldly wisdom at the time, was based on Tony Robbins' worldview. Today, I have a scriptural worldview uh, based on the Bible, and we'll continue. Contents. 5. Introduction. 11. The best way to use this book. 13. Personal perfection. 16. Life. 19. Responsibility. 22. Knowledge. 25. Mental knowledge. 30. Power. 33. Pain. 59. Pleasure. 83. Your brain. 86. Your mind. 89. Self-esteem.
94. Mental self-esteem. 97. Love. 106. Mental love. 108. Respect. 116. Mental respect. 118. Happiness. 128. Mental happiness. 130. Health. 139. Mental health. 143. Wealth. 152. Mental wealth. One hundred and fifty four effort one hundred and sixty mental effort one sixty two relaxation one sixty four mental relaxation one sixty eight communication one seventy two information one seventy nine language one eighty three thought one eighty eight memory. 192, learn, rather, to learn. 195, to remember. 197, an idea. 209, focus. 217, awareness. 220, to understand. 235, to realize. 239, experience. 242, to study. 247, to teach. 251, education. 255, a fact. 259, a belief. 266, your conscience. 270, your consciousness. 274, honesty. 277, logic. 282, value. 284, improvement. 288, self-improvement. 293, success. 294, failure. 296, desire. 299, motivation. 303, a goal. 315, a system. 320, a mental system. 326, decision. 333, commitment. 337, afterward. 339, definitions, content order. 345, definitions, alphabetical order. 351, index. Introduction. What exactly is this book about, and how can you benefit by reading it? Simply stated, this book is a guide to understanding many important basic truths about life. By reading this book, you'll gain a clearer understanding of these important basic truths. After you have this clearer understanding, you'll gain much more control over your life. You'll also gain a clearer understanding of exactly what you truly want and exactly what you'll truly need to do to get it. This book will give you the basic life knowledge that you'll need to have to gain true love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth. Today, I don't believe that you'd find that in this book. I believe that you'll find that in the scriptures, the Etzefer, the dedicating, dedicated writings from our Creator, Yahuwah. If you're wondering who I am and what background I have that would enable me to write a book about how to gain love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth, then please let me introduce myself. My name is Dominic Ficini, and I was born and raised in Sterling Heights, Michigan. While I was growing up, I was always very outgoing and I truly loved to try new things and meet new people. When I found myself in high school trying to make new friends, I realized that I needed to make some very important changes 
You see, by the age of 15, I was six feet, two inches tall and weighed only 135 pounds. As you can imagine, I was very thin and had very little muscle, body fat, or anything else for that matter, except skin and bone. I wasn't very attractive, and I didn't receive much attention from anyone else, unless other people were making fun of me. I was in desperate need of some respect. Instead of giving up on life, I decided to find a way to improve my body. I remember going to public school, rather, to my public, public library, and checking out a book on weight training. I studied it, and then actually used what I had learned. It wasn't easy. I had to work very hard and do everything just right in order for my body to grow. By the time I was 17, I had finally normalized my body I was 6 feet 2 inches and weighed a solid 170 pounds. By that point, I was convinced that I had the power to change my future with the right knowledge. I fell in love with learning and with the great potential that I felt with this new understanding. After I finished high school, I found, my, found myself studying full-time at Oakland University to become a mechanical engineer. At the same time, I was working 40 hours a week as a cook to pay for my bills. Things were happening very slowly and I was beginning to realize that life was much more complicated than I thought. I wasn't happy with things, so I began to search for new knowledge to help change my life. I was very fortunate early on because I had the opportunity to listen to some tapes by a man that helped change my life forever. The man's name was Anthony Robbins. Now today, I, don't, I do not recommend his information. I recommend the scriptures. Uh, he not only inspired me, but he introduced me to knowledge and techniques that were truly powerful and effective. Ever since then, I've been continuously searching for new tools, new techniques, and new information that can truly make a difference. I now have over 24 years of experience in life. Today, as of this reading, it is 48 years. I've read over 500 books on how to improve my mind, my emotions, my body, and my relationships. And I still continue to search for better information every day. That still holds true. In this book, I've taken the absolute best of what I've learned, and I've broken it down into what I call basic truths. Basic truths are things that are true today, were true yesterday, and will always be true tomorrow. Now, today, I don't see that this, script, the books, this book does not contain that information. I believe only true, uh, basic truths will be found that can be trusted today, yesterday, and forever will only be found in the scriptures. I've written this book so that my children, my family, and my friends will have the knowledge that they'll need to have in order to gain true love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth. There's always room for improvement. That saying holds true for everything that we do and for every area of our lives. However, continuous improvement is not easy. It's a never-ending journey full of challenges and obstacles, but the rewards include ever-increasing true love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth, just to name a few. Now today, I believe that you can find that continuous improvement only through reading and living the scriptures. Yaz Torah, his loving instructions, or loving instruction, and also in the Renewed Covenant. Realize that if there were no challenges or obstacles in your life, then you would never grow as a human being. Today, I don't use the word human. Human is based on the prefix H-U, hue, is a 
Egyptian god with a ram's head and a human body. And so a Hugh man is one who worships Hugh, uh, but doesn't really know it. And so I prefer to use the word mankind or person. This is the only life that you have to live. So make the most of it. Look at every mistake or tragedy as a lesson learned. Move on with that new knowledge and try not to let it happen again. If you find yourself making the same mistakes over and over again, then simply think of them as a reminder that you need to change what you're doing and try something new. The only way you can fail is if you decide to give up and stop trying. Or today, I believe, if you choose to reject Yahweh and his word and blaspheme the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. So simply decide that no matter what happens in your life, you'll always keep learning and growing. Some of the greatest lessons that I've ever learned were the results of mistakes made by myself or by those around me. Always remember that you can learn from the mistakes that other people make as well as from your own mistakes. Uh, that still holds true today. And I believe that you'll find most of the mistakes you'll want to learn from will be the lives that were lived in the scriptures. That's where you'll get eternal truth from. If you think of life, or anything else for that matter, as being too complex, then the most logical thing to do is to study it. It's a good idea to break things down into smaller units so that you can understand them more easily. That's exactly what I've done for you with this book. I've broken your mind down into smaller units so that you'll be able to easily understand exactly what you need to do to gain long-term love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth. This book has not been written so that after you read it once, you'll want to put it on a shelf. It has been written and organized in a very clear and easy to understand order so that you'll truly enjoy reading it over and over again. Well, today I would recommend after you hear it once, then do put it on a shelf or never read it again. Think of this book as your personal guide to continuous improvement. I would say think of this book as your personal guide to lead you to the scriptures. If you read it over and over again for the rest of your entire life, then you'll always understand exactly what you need to do to gain long-term love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth. And that statement's not true. But if you do read the Et Sefer over and over again for the rest of your entire life, then Yahuwah, through the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, He will teach you all truth. The best way to use this book one, absolutely commit yourself to truly wanting to gain long-term love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth. Today, I would say, absolutely commit yourself to truly wanting to gain eternal life through the scriptures. Two, absolutely commit yourself to truly wanting to do whatever it will take for you to gain long-term love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth, as well as eternal life. See, all of these things will actually be found in eternal life. Eternal love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth, that will be found through the scriptures. So this is quite amazing to me, as I wrote this book when I was an atheist, that now some of these statements are actually still true today, but only if you research, use, and recommend, or actually live the scriptures. And I would recommend the Et Sefer, the dedicated writings. Three, absolutely commit yourself 
to truly wanting to continuously improve your mind, your emotions, your body, and your relationships. Four, absolutely commit yourself to truly wanting to do whatever it will take for you to continuously improve your mind, your emotions, your body, and your relationships. Five, review this book once each month and then actually use what you learn. I would say review the scriptures every day and then actually use what you learn. Actually live it, all of it, as the Spirit leads, as the Ruach HaKadosh shows you what to live for today. Personal perfection. Personal perfection is your power to continuously improve your mind, your emotions, your body, and your relationships. Nobody's perfect. That's because no matter how good you are at something, you can always become even better. And I would say the reason is because we're sinful. Our nature, we're in a fallen state, according to the scriptures. As human beings or as mankind, we have the power to continuously improve whatever we want to. But what it all comes down to is whether or not we have a good enough reason to truly want to continuous, continuously improve something. No one can ever be perfect on this side of eternity. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to become as perfect as we can. Personal perfection is your power to continuously improve your mind, your emotions, your body, and your relationships. And this is actually a, uh, an Elohim given or given by Yah freedom of choice to do whatever it is you want to do with your life to where you'll either spend eternity with him or in separation from him. The choice is yours. When you begin to continuously improve yourself, even if it's just a little bit each day, you'll be amazed at what a difference it'll make. When you were a child, didn't you often think about growing up and becoming better? Of course you did. And that's because we're all born with the desire to grow and become more. So what happened to your dreams? Have you forgotten what they are? Or have you stopped thinking about them because you've stopped believing that they can come true? Let that child inside of you live again. And the scriptures say, unless you become like a little child, you will in no wise enter in to the kingdom of Yahweh. Give yourself the gift of being young at heart and don't ever be afraid to dream the impossible. And I would say only do that with much prayer and humility before your creator, Yahweh. And Yahuwah means, Yah means I am. Yahuwah is the Father's name, which means I am He who breathes life. And Yahusha is the Son's name, which means I am He who saves. And I believe that Yah is Yahuwah, is Yahusha, that they are all Elohim. They are all one. They are all the Almighty One. When someone first dreamt about flying, people used to say, stop dreaming. Now millions of people fly every day. When someone first dreamt about landing on the moon, people used to say, stop dreaming. Now landing on the moon is part of history and we're on our way to Mars. And I do not believe that to be fact today. I believe that's a deception by NASA and that we, the moon landing was a hoax and that Mars is a hoax and that, um, well, you can watch videos on my playlist. I don't want to get into a teaching on that. But I think a lot of people are waking up to the deception in this world. That uh, the, and It just still is to show you, when you're an atheist, you'll totally agree with this, most likely. You'll probably be like, wow, that's so true. This was written back in 1994. 
I was born in 69, the year we so-called land on the moon, but then I've done hundreds of hours of research, and I, cl I believe that the earth is indeed flat, according to the scriptures, and that um, you'll only get that through um, deprogramming of this uh, sinful world we've been born into. And so, continuing on, the next time someone tells you to stop dreaming, just remember, today's dreams will be tomorrow's future. Or today's dreams could be tomorrow's nightmare, too. you got to be careful what you dream about. Make sure it's along, it goes along with Yah's word and not Hashatan's or Satan's lies. You already have the power to continuously improve yourself and every area of your life. You simply haven't given yourself a good enough reason to truly want to continuously improve. If you use your personal perfection, I can promise you that you'll soon find yourself living your dreams. And that I cannot say today. You may end up living your nightmares if you do your own will, which is the definition of wickedness, to go our own way instead of Yah's way. Life. Life is the order of your experiences. There you have it. The meaning of life. Now that's a very superficial way of understanding the meaning of life. You'll never get the meaning of life unless you're in the scriptures. And you'll find that Yahusha is the key. Yahusha. Yahusha, Yahusha. The son of Yah. Which is Yahusha. I am he who saves. He is the meaning of life. Yah's word, when you discover that, when you live Yah's word, you'll discover the meaning of life. That Yah created you for his good pleasure. Do you know where you can find the answer to the meaning of life? It's in the scriptures only. You can find the answer in the dictionary. Yeah, it'll be a different worldly definition. In fact, the answer to any question that you'll ever have is out there somewhere. You just have to keep searching for it. And you'll only find all the answers through Yah and His Word and in His perfect timing. You may not learn everything on this side of eternity. In fact, you won't. <laughs> um, life is the order of your experiences. Your life is made up of your experiences. In fact, your entire life is made up, your, up of your mental, emotional, physical, and relational experiences, period. 1. Mental refers to your mind. 2. Emotional refers to your emotions or feelings. 3. Physical refers to your body. 4. Relational re refers to your relationships. Be sure to realize that the quality of your life is based on the quality of your experiences and that your experiences are always based on, one, the control that you have over your thoughts, your focus, two, what you think about, information, three, how you think about something, communication, Remember, if you focus on pain and sorrow, then you'll experience pain and sorrow. And if you focus on pleasure and joy, then you'll experience pleasure and joy. Of course, that's very limited. If you're going through pain and suffering, it's going to be a little difficult to focus on pleasure and joy. See how deceptive language can be to make you think something's true when it's not. Just because it says something and is written down doesn't mean it's true. You have to test, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. If you're always thinking about how terrible your life is and how terrible your life could be, then you will live a terrible life. But if you're always thinking about how wonderful your life is and how wonderful your life could be, 
then you will live a wonderful life. Just be careful if you don't have the Savior, Yahusha, and you don't live your life according to his Torah, his loving instructions, you're not going to end up in it with a wonderful life, that's for certain. The choice is always yours. Now that you clearly understand that your life is made up of your experiences, you need to, one, decide exactly what it is you truly want to experience. Two, focus on it. Three, go for it, 100%. To me, and I would say go for it with um, humility and prayer and reading and living the scriptures first. The meaning of life is Yahuwah, continuous improvement. Um, but I would say the meaning of life is Yah's word, um, is to live Yah's word. The meaning of life, the scriptures say that the whole duty of man is to fear Yahweh and obey his Torah, obey his commandments or his loving instruction. That's because if you continuously improve yourself and every area of your life, then you'll eventually gain much more love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth than you ever dreamt possible. But just keep in mind, if you keep thinking you're going to continuously improve yourself, what happens when you start getting older and your body starts falling apart and you may get disease or <clears throat> you're going to die eventually? So these, you know, this is a deception to think that you're going to always continuously improve unless you have eternal life given through your Creator, through the Scriptures, through the belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Mashiach, the Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach. And then living his word. Responsibility. Responsibility is your power of being in control. Responsibility is a power that you have but what exactly is responsibility? Responsibility is your power of being in control. And when you look at it, the word responsibility, it's almost like you have the ability to respond to something. Therefore, you're responsible for it because you were in control of your ability to respond. When you think a thought, who's in control of that thought? You are. When you feel a feeling, who's in control of that feeling? You may not realize it, but you are. And when you take an action, who's in control of that action? You are. As a Mankind, as part of mankind, or as a man or woman, you have the power of being in control of your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, and your future. And that's not true. You don't have control over your future. Yah's word says that we think we uh, know what we're going to do, but Yahuwah directs our steps. Realize that. You think a thought first, and then you feel a feeling, or take an action based on a thought. Your feelings and your actions are always based on what you're thinking about. So you'll have more control over your feelings and your actions if you have more control over your thoughts. If you weren't in control of or responsible for your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, and your future, then you wouldn't be in control of your life. And you're really not in control of your life. You're partially in control. Your entire life would be controlled by someone else. 
in many ways that's that's the case you your life may be being controlled by satan or authority above you and ultimately it is directed by and controlled by completely overseen by the providence of yahweh but he does give you free choice you'd have no power to make your own choices or decisions fortunately you and you alone are responsible for every area of your life and in reality you alone are responsible for the choices you make in your life you're responsible for your own decisions which sins your life is no one else's responsibility but your own see that's not true while you're a child it's other people's responsibilities except for the fact yeah that your parents are responsible for you until you are 18 years old and able to take care of yourself and that could be disputed 18 that you may probably become an adult more when you're 12 or 13 and you're responsible it's going to depend on consciousness um so these aren't state these aren't statements of fact that may be according to some laws that man has made, but Yahweh's laws, his instructions, and they supersede or are above all of man's laws. No matter what condition your life is in right now, realize that you have made the choices that have directly or indirectly resulted in the way that your life is right now. And see, other people made choices before you that put you in a position before you started, so... That's not altogether true. By realizing that you alone are responsible for your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, and your future, you'll begin to realize that you have complete control over your entire life. That is such a false statement. You do not have complete control over your entire life. That's a lie. So it's up to you to use that control to make your life become exactly the way that you truly want it to be because no one else will do it for you. You see, this makes you think that you can make your life become exactly the way you want it to be and that's not true. Only Yah can help you make your life even to where it's partially righteous even. You'll see as you study the scriptures, it's it's a lifelong process of learning that. And you'll learn a lot through making mistakes and choosing. If you want to choose to live outside of Yah's word, you'll learn a lot of lessons from that as well. Knowledge is the understanding of information. We've all heard how important it is to have knowledge. But what exactly is knowledge? Knowledge is the understanding of information. There's a big difference between knowing something and having knowledge. To know something is to simply have that information stored in your memory. You might know a lot about something but still not understand it. And if you don't understand something, then it will not increase your knowledge. See, this don't really make sense. Knowing simply comes from having information. Knowledge comes from both having information and understanding that information. So, knowing more is the first step. And understanding more is the second step. I would say the first step is prayer. And... If any, of, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of Yahuwah, who gives all liberally and without reproach and upbraideth not. But uh, if any man asks for wisdom, don't ask with doubt, because then don't expect to receive anything from Yahuwah. Knowing more can increase your knowledge, but only if you understand what you know. There's so many times we think we understand something and it's just a lie. So you're only going to get true wisdom and knowledge through Yahuwah and his word. Remember, 
You can have information and still not have knowledge. Information only becomes knowledge to you after you understand it. It's often said that knowledge is power, but this is only partially true. If you have knowledge, but you don't use that knowledge, then you have no power at all. So, knowledge can be power, but only if you use that knowledge. Remember this saying instead, knowledge and continuous improvement is power. And today I would say, knowledge of Yah's word and humbly obeying his word is power. But I wouldn't even try to think like that because you don't want to start feeling and thinking you've got power because I'm just, I mean, we're just dirt. We were created out of dust. We don't really hold much power. Yahuwah holds all the power. He's all powerful. And it's only when we let him live through us that we experience his power in our life. Otherwise, we start actually experiencing the power of the father of lies, Hashatan or Satan. Now you're on the right track. Remember that saying and use it often. I wouldn't recommend remembering that saying because knowledge and continuous improvement are all you need to gain love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth. What a lie that is. I would say Yahuwah and his word are all you need. Mental knowledge. Mental knowledge is the understanding of your mind. You're going to need mental knowledge if you want to gain love, respect, happiness, health, and wealth. But what exactly is mental knowledge? Mental knowledge is the understanding of your mind. This book will give you mental knowledge. It will give you not only information about your mind, but it will, it will also give you a new understanding of your mind. And the scriptures will do that perfectly. Many books have been written about the mind. While most of them do contain useful information, many of them are difficult for the average reader to understand and use. And I would even say many of them would be a deception. Start with the scriptures if you're going to study anything else. I would start with the scriptures first and make sure it lines up with the word of Yahweh, the word of Yah. Although your mind is complex, understanding how your mind works, excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of some coffee here. <clears throat> Although your mind is complex, understanding how your mind works doesn't have to be difficult at all. In fact, you'll find that understanding how your mind works can be easy, interesting, and lots of fun. And I would say the same about the scriptures when you have the Ruach HaKadosh in you, teaching you all truth. During the past 10 years, I've read over 500 books on how to improve my mind, my emotions, my body, and my relationships, and I still continue to read more every day. Well, now today, I, I mainly focus on the scriptures. Out of the hundreds of books that I've read, I found several authors whose work I highly recommend. And today I could really only recommend without reserve the Etz Affair. So a lot of this is going to... Uh, no. I only recommend authors that provide the reader with information that is truly useful, effective, powerful, and easy to understand. A complete list of these highly recommended authors can be found 
along with the absolute best products available today in How to Gain Love, Respect, Happiness, Health, and Wealth, your personal perfection catalog, which I never did make and I don't have. Today I would say go to David Yao YouTube and research all the links on there. This one-of-a-kind catalog is available free of charge from CI Publishing, and that company doesn't exist today. See the back of this book for details. Read this book slowly and really think about each topic as you read it. Think about how each topic relates to you and think about how each topic relates to other topics. This will help you realize why it's so important for you to continuously improve your mind. It will also help you realize how amazingly powerful your mind truly is. And I would say only do that if you're, you know, with prayer. This is the first book in a four-book series, and then I never ended up making these other books, on continuous improvement of your mind, your emotions, your body, and your relationships. The four-book series is as follows. How to Gain Love, Respect, Happiness, Health, and Wealth, Personal Perfection of Your Mind, Two Emotions, Three Body, Four Relationships. It's important for you to realize that this series was written to be read in order.